One of the biggest features people are looking at today in the security world and with networking is micro-segmentation. This is a key feature. We really need to understand how it works with Cisco's ACI. So we're going to talk some of the basics. We'll take a look at an example data center. And what I'll be doing is I'll be using Microsoft Paint, very advanced uh, paint program from Microsoft. And so when we think about our data center today, in this example here, I have some web servers, I have some app servers, I have some database servers, all of my data center. Well, the first thing we think about our data centers, we often think about perimeter security. Security from stopping outside people from getting in. And when we think about our perimeter security, we find that most data centers have outstanding perimeter security. They have firewalls and they have demilitarized zones, intrusion detection and next generation firewall services. They have all kinds of great stuff, okay? And most data centers really have fantastic fantastic external protection. The issue becomes is once you get inside the data center, you get past that external perimeter that oftentimes the data center can be wide open. Just because it's been too much of a uh, hassle for all these types of management, it's just too challenging to uh, go ahead and have to manage all the individual servers. And sometimes within a data center, you'll go inside and you'll see, wow, any server can talk to any server. And so we want to start taking a look at different types of segmentation. In ACI, the first type of segmentation we have is endpoint group or EPG segmentation. If you're doing a network-centric deployment, one of the easiest types of deployments to do, a EPG is roughly going to map up to a VLAN and a subnet. So in our scenario here, we have web servers, we have app servers, and we have our database servers. We want to control traffic. We want to say, hey, web servers can only talk to the app servers on certain ports, and app servers can only talk to database. So our first level of segmentation that we're going to introduce in this picture is going to be at the EPG level. We would create three EPGs. We would create an EPG for the web servers, an endpoint group for the app servers, and an endpoint group for the database servers. And we know a couple of things when we create an endpoint group. By default, everybody in the endpoint group can talk to each other. So in this scenario, all the web servers can talk to each other, app servers can talk to each other, and database servers can talk to each other. But the endpoint groups can't communicate until we set up an application profile with a contract. But we have, this is our first level of segmentation. And so that's really our first type of segmentation that we're interested in, is we have our EPG segmentation. To be honest, for a lot of companies, but for a lot of companies, we find that this is enough segmentation, that this is really all the segmentation they need to be able to go ahead in a security level. But some companies want to have more security. And so the next thing we're going to talk about is we don't like all the web servers being able to talk to each other. So maybe by default, everybody inside an EPG can go ahead and talk to each other. So in this scenario, we might have EPG web here and everybody can talk to each other. Same thing with EPG app, all the app servers can talk to each other. And with the EPG database, they can all talk to each other. Well, we want to stop that. So if you think back to some other networking environments where in traditional networking, you might use private VLANs, isolated private VLANs to prevent communication within a VLAN, we're going to use something very similar. What we're going to use is something called intra-EPG isolation. With intra, intra meaning between, right? Intra EPG isolation, this can prevent communications. When we turn on intra-EPG isolation with it on an EPG, what happens is pretty cool. As soon as we do that, all of a sudden, we now are stopping the web servers from talking to each other. Now, if they have contracts to talk to the app servers or whatever, they still can. This is just preventing communication within that endpoint group. This is kind of really cool because think about it. If this one web server, if one of these web servers got a virus and they could go ahead and directly talk to all the other web servers with no control, or they could easily spread that virus, worm, or trojan. We can go ahead and introduce EPG isolation, entry EPG isolation in this case on each of these. And this is really a great step towards segmenting our network. Now there's lots of definitions out there for what micro segmentation is. And you'll see a lot of people out there with all kinds of different definitions. The definition I like is really is what I want it to be. I want to have the ability to apply policy for an individual endpoint. Now I mentioned, I say individual endpoint, not like individual virtual machine. The reason being is a virtual machine with multiple interfaces. I might want individual policies on each of those interfaces. Or if I'm using containers, I might want to be able to go ahead and apply them uh, policies to individual containers. So I micro segmentation, I want the ability to apply policy on an individual. And so that's our goal. Well, right now we've done some pretty cool stuff. I've isolated them down to individual machines. But what if I have a web server over here? Let's say, for example, one of these web servers, I'm going to go ahead and name a web server here. This web server is named Webby. Pretty clever that way. And you know what? 
Webby is on the same VPG as all the other web servers, but you know, I decided I want to have different policies for Webby than everybody else. But I don't want to change what VLAN he's on. I don't want to create another VLAN or another subnet. I just want to have different rules for him because maybe Webby's allowed to talk to the app servers in a different way than the other web servers. So what I can do now is I can do micro segmentation or what we call an attribute based EPG. And so what, what it, this does is I can create a special attribute based EPG that's independent of the VLAN or subnet. And I can create a rule that says, hey, listen, if, if the virtual machine name equals Webby, then you will be put into this particular attribute based um, EPG. And so in this scenario, what's going to happen is initially Webby, of course, is going to be associated with EPG web, but then he's going to be moved and now we'll go ahead and be part of this EPG and uh, we'll cleverly call the EPG special. So an EPG special, if your name's Webby, you'll be put in EPG special. Now I can do attribute based virtual machines for all kinds of different um, attributes and we'll look at those in just a sec. So this last method for our micro segmentation is attribute based all right, EPGs. And I can also do it based on IP as well. So these are some pretty cool things. Let's take a look at it now and go through this basic process on an actual, um, on the actual server. So I'm going to connect to my environment. So I'm connecting into the APIC. And real quick, I'll just create a quick tenant for this. And I'll call this tenant Zach, give it a VRF just called main. So very easily create a tenant. So here's a brand new tenant. And let's add an application profile called my app. Well, so I'm in the environment looking at the MyApp application and I'm going to create an endpoint group. I drag and drop an endpoint group down. I'm going to call this one Web EPG. And I'm going to create a bridge domain. I'm going to create a bridge domain called Web Bridge. Specify the VRF for the one I created, Zach Main. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and click Next. I'm going to add in a subnet for this bridge domain. Click OK, click Next, click Finished. Click OK, and then to save it, I'll click Submit. So now I've created a very basic EPG that's associated with the 10.4.4 subnet. Typically, the last thing I do is associate it with a VLAN. So let's go ahead and associate that with a VLAN. So just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and link it out to a port on my switch. And maybe these guys are in VLAN 400. All right, so very basic saying now this EPG is associated with the 10.4 subnet and VLAN 400. So very basic EPG. We know within an EPG, everybody can talk to everybody. So how do we do that first step? Right now we know that everybody can talk to everybody. We wanna get that intra EPG isolation so that the web servers can't talk to each other. The way we do that, I simply check this box here. I click enforce, and when I click enforce and click submit, it's gonna go ahead and turn on the intra PGPG isolation. Very similar to the way that private, isolated private VLANs work. And so that does our intra EPG isolation. But what if I wanted to go ahead and pull out that server that was named Webby? We have the ability to do that. I go back to my app. I notice at the top I have an E for an EPG, but next to it I have a, that's a Greek letter mu and an E. I'm going to bring that down so far, and I'm going to call this, we, we were calling it special, so I'm going to call it special EPG. And it's still in the same bridge domain, but now I can specify an attribute. I'm going to specify a virtual machine attribute. In this case, I'm going to call it Webby Server and the type's name, and I'm going to say, hey, listen, if it, I'll actually go ahead and say if it starts with. So I, anything, I want anything that starts W-E-B-B-Y. And so this is going to say any virtual machine that starts off with W-E-B-B-Y is now going to be put into this special EPG, this micro segmentation EPG that can have a different set of rules. And so this is attribute based micro segmentation. And when I click OK and I'll click Submit, I now see I have another EPG. These two EPGs, what do they have in common? They're both point at the same bridge domain. All right, they both point the same bridge domain. And to be a member of EPG, Web EPG, you simply have to be in that bridge domain, which we saw was a, had a subnet and a VLAN associated. To be in the special EPG, you have to have a server name that starts with Webby. So this is the basics of micro segmentation. Our three big components are endpoint group segmentation, intra EPG isolation, and VM attribute based endpoint groups. So thank you so much for listening to this section.